The Museum of Fine Arts Houston presents Jacoby Satterwhite, A Meta Prayer. Interdisciplinary artist Jacoby Satterwhite transforms the museum's vast Cullinan Hall with a meta prayer. The expansive multimedia installation that fuses choreography, video, animation, lighting, and music to reimagine a kaleidoscope of computer-generated works. A meta prayer constructs a digital space that represents love, joy, and resilience. The soundtrack pulses with energy, providing the video its driving beat. This exhibition is on view through October 13th at the MFAH. Visit mfah.org slash meta to learn more. Today on CityCast Houston, we've all heard the saying, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And here in H-Town, we've got some standout spots and must-try dishes. Plus, with so many of y'all listening to us during your morning routine, we're hoping this conversation with Houston Chronicle restaurant columnist Bao Ong will help you discover your next go-to breakfast joint to jumpstart your day. It's Wednesday, September 11th. I'm Raheel Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Hey, Bao, what's up? How are you? Welcome back in. Hi, thanks for having me back. I'm so excited to talk to you because I love breakfast like so many others. And you actually put out with the rest of the Houston Chronicle team a fantastic primer on some of the best places around the city of Houston. Now, as y'all were researching this, what was the most surprising thing you tried that you were like, okay, this works for breakfast? I love breakfast as someone that's kind of an early riser, not not because I'm a morning person necessarily, but I love doing my writing in the morning. So I'm always looking for great breakfast options. But in terms of like the most surprising thing I've had, it's probably all these cool collabs that have been going on at Kalache Shop. Uh, you know, they're working with all these different chefs in town. They just had one recently uh, with the chef at Craft Pita. They did one with Blue Dorn. I think my favorite one that they did was with Roostar, the bun meat place in town mm-hmm. that has a few locations. And they had this Chinese style barbecued pork for the filling for the kolache. That was definitely unexpected and my favorite by far. I love all the collaborations that are happening around the city of Houston. I'll give you a quick story about breakfast, okay? When my wife and I were honeymooning in Fiji, I know that sounds so elite, but that's where we were. Everybody's like, you got to try Vegemite. And I don't know if you know what this is, but it's like this spread that Australians love and people in Fiji love. Bow, I tried it. It was not good. So you know what? Sometimes uh, not every recommendation is great. Yeah, no, I've had Vegemite once. I can't say I'm a fan. I feel like I need to try it again. And usually it ends up being, I don't know, kind of a a souvenir when I'm like traveling somewhere that has it and you bring it back because everyone wants to try it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to stick to the American classics. Okay. And let's start with that because We can't have a conversation about breakfast without that classic plate, right? You've got the bacon, the sausage, pancakes, eggs. Maybe you want to go with waffles. Give me a spot that just makes a great classic breakfast plate. Okay. I have two options for you. My first choice is definitely Harry's. Uh, It's located in Midtown off Tuam. It's been open since 1948. It has these diner vibes that I think is pretty rare to find in Houston, uh, especially I, I lived in New York City for 14 years and diners were kind of the place that you go to, you know, breakfast, lunch or dinner. And that's a little bit harder to find in Houston. But Harry's does a really good job. You know, you can get these tall stacks of pancakes, huge omelets. Uh, the coffee's always hot and strong. They uh, fresh squeeze their orange juice, kind of checks off all those boxes that you want from that kind of classic all-American diner type of breakfast. Uh, and also, I'd like to point out Tellwink Grill. That's a close uh, runner up in my book. It's located more towards the east end. It's this old diner. It's, you know, it's a, that type of place where the menus are a little bit greasy and they mm. kind of pack you in there. There's always a line out the door, especially on Sundays, you know, when a lot of people are, are have left church and, you know, you get that kind of like greasy diner breakfast, you know, your pancakes, your eggs and bacon and toast and those little smuckers jams on uh, on the side. Um, It just hits the spot every time. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I love just that old school feeling, the huge servings, right? Like you're not getting little brunch plates, you're getting big breakfast plates. I love those recommendations. But look, it wouldn't be breakfast without breakfast tacos in Houston. 
So I got to put you on the spot. Give me your favorite spot for breakfast tacos. Well, this is always a hard one, especially in a city <laughs> like Houston. I hope I don't uh, uh, lose any friends here, but uh, Sunrise Taquitos is definitely the top of my breakfast taco list of recommendations. It's off Memorial Drive. It's kind of connected to a, a Shell gas station. And, you know, they're only open during the daytime. So, you know, this is like the spot to go for breakfast tacos. So, you know, once you're in there, you can see the women working behind the counter. You know, they're making the tortillas by hand. You get that aroma of the flour and the corn tortillas Mm. being made. And then, you know, you choose your fillings, you know, whether it's like eggs and bacon or if you want chorizo, if you want salsa verde in there. And, And you'll walk out for less than $4 and have a really filling breakfast. Oh, that sounds so good. The fresh made tortillas, and then you get to pick your fillings right there. This is going to be a really tough episode to finish, Bao, because now I just want to go eat. (laughs) This is awesome. Now, speaking of grab and go, school is back in session and a lot of parents are on the go. What's another good grab and go breakfast that listeners should try out? I think I talked about Kalachi Shop earlier. Um, Their Heights location actually has a drive through window. So, I love going there if I really need like a quick breakfast. You know, uh, Common Bond has some great locations where you can just go in and out and quickly get a pastry or or a breakfast sandwich. Um, I I actually secretly love Waffle House. <laughs> it's kind of yes. nostalgic for me, so I have no problems recommending uh, you know a Waffle House if you're near one. And with Waffle House, you get an extra ten bonus points if you find one with the letters on the sign all lit up correctly because it's impossible. Exactly. (laughs) For a long time, I've known that Holocaust Museum Houston is one of the largest Holocaust museums in the country. But did you know it's also the first fully bilingual Holocaust museum with galleries and exhibitions in English and Spanish? Being involved in my community and encouraging others to be more involved is really important to me, and that's why I'm excited that Holocaust Museum Houston is celebrating Latinx Heritage Month this September, and it's kicking it off with a special day of action on September 14th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's going to be drop-in museum tours, voter registration, and booths from local organizations supporting the local Latinx community. Plus, there's going to be a film screening about the life of civil rights activist Dolores Huerta, a performance by the Segundo Barrio Children's Chorus, and engaging panel discussions. And the best part? It's all free. Celebrate, learn, and take action. Visit hmh.org slash Latinx for more details. The British International School of Houston is an international and diverse private school with top academic results in a state-of-the-art campus serving children from pre-K-3 to 12th grade. The British International School of Houston offers an outstanding private education with state-of-the-art facilities on a sprawling 32-acre campus unlike anywhere else. They recruit teachers who are global talents to inspire students' confidence, resilience, and creativity with an international-minded environment. Students build pathways to the world's best universities through excellent results and internationally recognized qualifications. Are you interested in learning more about the British International School of Houston? Search BIS Houston today and get in touch with their admissions team. You can also join them for their upcoming open house on September 18th by registering online. That's the British International School of Houston. I'm glad you brought up Waffle House, right? Look, it's an indulgent meal, right? And usually when a quicker grab and go place, you're thinking it it might be unhealthy, it might be donuts. Are there any breakfast recommendations that are delicious, but a bit healthier, right? That can keep us going all day. So for a healthy option, definitely the top of my list is vibrant. It's this airy space, lots of little plants all around the room. It feels very LA, you know, like kind of like one of those places where you're supposed to pay for those, you know, overpriced air wine juices. (laughs) Um, It's in Montrose on Fairview. And, you know, the menu is full of things like chia pudding and bone broth and, rice in like every color of the rainbow and you know but the food is actually very good it's very filling you don't feel like you're eating something healthy and you like you leave Mm -hmm. hungry 
I love picking up a coffee there. And especially if I've been a little bit indulgent during the week, I remember they had this uh, kelp noodle pad thai version that they had on the menu that was really what? great. And yeah, and I would like get dessert because like they have a keto friendly brownie or something like that or a gluten free option. So, um, you know, Vibrant does a really good job of kind of making you feel like you're not eating um, Soylent or something yeah, like I know that. For sure. Yeah, but it, they do a really good job. Definitely sounds like an LA vibe. Now, is it LA pricing as well? Are we talking $20 avocado toast? Pretty close, but not quite. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good, yeah, that's a good point. Hey, you know, over here, we have so many great coffee shops. I love coffee. I look forward to coffee every single morning. I sound like an addict right now, which I am of coffee. And one of the cool things about coffee shops around the city of Houston is that a lot of these places have great bakeries and they have really good like pastry options. Give me one that has a great coffee, but also something with a delicious side like a breakfast taco, a kolache, a donut, whatever it is, but that extra something at this coffee shop. Definitely hands down Emma. They opened a few months ago. It's in the Heights. There are three partners behind it. And one, uh, Marlena, she specializes in coffee. So you know you're getting like amazing coffee. She's great at sourcing beans. She has really interesting drinks like a horchata latte and different kind of classic kind of like Mexican coffee drinks on the menu. But in addition to that, the pastry chef is a, a James Beard nominee this year. And she has some of the best sweet and savory options in terms of pastries in the city on the menu. Uh, you know, from a simple concha, which, you know, I don't know, I feel like I've eaten like way too many dry, unmemorable conchas through the years, but like hers are very, you know, pillowy. They're just sweet enough. She has interesting flavors like guava, for example, and they just look beautiful. Like it's like, it's something that you want to Instagram, like the moment you order it. Uh, and she's also like changing out the menu in terms of different types of pastries that's that she offers uh, for specials. And then her partner, Nicolas, he puts out amazing tacos on the menu, chilaquiles. So you could really just kind of hang out uh, all morning and you know drink coffee and eat some like amazing pastries. Wow, that sounds fantastic. That is on my list. I am going to check it out very soon because I've heard so many great things about it. Everything you just echoed is what everybody is saying about Emma. So I can't wait to try it out as well. Now, I'm going to put okay. you on the spot again, all right? What is your I'm best ready. coffee in the city of Houston? Best coffee in Houston. Okay, I wrote a story about uh, this guy. So I kind of have a soft spot for for it. But the coffee business is called White Tile. It's uh, located within Tio Trumpo, borderline heights, um, rice military area. So, you know, you can go in and get your breakfast tacos or, you know, a side of the guac, which is really good. Like I always get like a latte with oat milk and, you know, like he just does a really great job there. It's just like a really friendly atmosphere as well. And he's worked at a lot of different coffee shops in the city, but White Tile. All right. Another one on the list. I love it. Let's go to my favorite thing about breakfast. I'm talking about those stuffed French toes, pancakes with all sorts of toppings. I want something for my sweet tooth. What is your recommendation for somebody like me that wants that, ooh, that big insulin rush? If you have a sweet tooth, which I, I definitely relate to cafeteria is one of my favorite spots in town. You know, you can get, you know, savory things like the pho kolache, which is like a classic there. And, and they do like a Chinese sausage taco. But on the sweet, sweet side, you know, there are so many options. They sell out on the weekends all the time. But you could get like a pistachio croissant or something like that, or a very over the top, you know, like cardamom bum. He's so innovative with his menu. And I don't know, I, I feel like I'm like spending way more than I, I always <laughs> yes. plan to when I step into cafeteria. Like, you know, I love ube, which is like super trendy right now in terms of like dessert flavors. And there's always like an ube option. Ube is so good. I know it's in right now, but it's like the perfect level of sweetness and flavor that just balances correctly. So I love anything with ube right now as well. Okay. 
my next question for you is going to celebrate the diversity of the city of Houston. All these places are great and they are celebrating an aspect of Houston, which I love. But let's talk about a place or places that listeners might not consider for breakfast, but they are awesome spots that are culturally diverse and definitely celebrating the city of Houston. What do you got for me? Dim sum, hands down. I think a lot of people think dim sum is this kind of like weekend only brunch type of ritual or you have to grab a group of friends and so you can order like a a lot of food. But, you know, dim sum can be enjoyed during the week for breakfast, whether you're going alone or with a friend or a small group of friends. But we have a lot of options. So like in Katy, for example, you have Tim Ho Wan, which is an internationally uh, renowned uh, restaurant that started in Hong Kong. And I believe one title they had at one point in time was the cheapest Michelin recognized restaurant. Um, oh, cool. Uh, because it was like under $5 that you could like enjoy dim sum at the original location in Hong Kong. And they've grown this a kind of international chain. And at Tim Hawan in Katy, which opened about two years ago, you can definitely order a nice breakfast. You know, you could have a rice porridge. You can order different various dumplings. You can have sweet options as well. If you want like a Portuguese tart, for example, Tim Hawan has you oh, covered. Wow. And if you don't want to go out to Katy, though, there are options within Asia Town. I just went to a spot called uh, Taste of Mulan here in Midtown. And they have uh, a number of great dim sum uh, options on the menu. And they have this $20 all-you-can-eat dumpling menu as well. Whoa. Okay, that might be the play right there because I want to try everything. All right. I need because I I don't want to limit myself if I'm trying something new. So I love that they have that all you can eat. And for 20 bucks, come on, that's perfect. No, I mean, I I kind of want to do this like dumpling challenge, see how many dumplings I can eat. (laughs) All right, Bao. Last question. This is going to be your toughest one. And I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. But in your opinion, who has the best breakfast in Houston? Oh, best breakfast (laughs) in Houston. You know, I'm going to have to go to with Emma just because the coffee, the pastries, the savory options are all on point across the board. And they're such great uh, people. They have a great story. It feels very Houston in terms of this success story. And, you know, just the popularity they've had off the bat. They started off at the farmer's market and worked their way up to opening this brick and mortar this year. And with the James Beard nomination, I think you just feel so good supporting a spot like Emma. Oh, that's perfect. I love the success story. I love that the food sounds fantastic and they're doing things elevated, which is nice. I can't wait to try it out. I can't wait to try out this whole list, honestly. Bao, thank you so much for changing up my breakfast routine. I can't wait to try all these places out. And thank you for joining us. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. That was Bao Ong. You can read all of his work in the Houston Chronicle. Hey, help us grow the show by sharing this episode with three of your friends who love breakfast like I do. You can also rate and review us wherever you listen. And do you want even more food recommendations, plus Houston news, events, and more? Subscribe to our daily newsletter, Hey Houston, with the link in our show notes. That will do it for today. I'm Raheel Ramzanali. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. internet strikes again hey guys sorry i'm back oh yeah and it just kind of like dropped <laughs> so i don't know if like maybe uh it's scared of francine i don't know my wi-fi or something <laughs>